Hello everyone, welcome to Homeschool Autism Life. My name is Jamie and today's video I wanted to talk about uh, preparing for the future. If you have a child with autism or special needs, um, when they get to about 15 to 18, there's a whole bunch of things that a parent starts to think about. I think it's something we think about when we first get that diagnosis, but when they get to be 15 to 18, then you start to see um, that certain things may or may not be possible for them in the future. Now, as I say that, I want all of you who know about the Sunrise Program and have been watching me from that perspective, I have not given up hope. I am still praying for that miracle that God will help him to, <clears throat> say, have conversational speech. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, there's so many things that uh, I have not lost hope. I have not um, stopped the Sunrise Program. I have not stopped so many different things but you still need to be forward thinking and kind of preparing for the future um, in the event that that miracle, um, that prayer request for God to help him to have a no more normal life or be able to live on his own or any of those things that we are still having our eye on um, doesn't happen. And so I think I will be talking um, in the later videos in the next few years, talking about what we've done, how it worked here in Alberta. Um, we live in Alberta, Canada, and my son is 15 years old and he is not conversational yet. And he, you know, probably won't graduate from high school, not for the foreseeable future, unless something drastically changes. Um, I make a joke that Darian does have autism, but he's also very easygoing and he's an introvert. So those things in combination means that he doesn't feel the, the need or the push or the desire to communicate a lot with other people. And he's pretty happy peeking. He's pretty happy in most situations. Um, very rarely does anything upset him unless his Xbox isn't doing well or something like that. He's pretty chill and relaxed, which is very helpful. But at the same time, some of those sunrise principles of getting him to want to be around people and whatever means that he, he doesn't have that desire. <laughs> so we've been looking at it from the position of, okay, we need to prepare for this. And I just wanted to state for the record that that doesn't mean that we're just like, oh, well, you know, we're not doing all of the things that we can to help him succeed and grow and whatever not a thing but we do need to prepare so um i think if you watched my earlier videos you would have seen me absolutely um reject the the ceiling or the prognosis that we were given um about what darian was going to be capable of what he was the, the best we could hope for was that he was going to stock shelves at a grocery store. And I still, still reject that prognosis. I am not doing self-fulfilled prophecy because I'm like, well, that's all he's going to do. So he could do that right now. In fact, it's quite funny because right now we'll go through the grocery line and he will see empty boxes of candies and gum. And he actually puts them together and actually hands them to the cashier. So I know he's capable of that at 15. So at 18, who knows what he's going to be capable of. But it's one of those things where I really really, I wanted to share that it is okay as an autism parent to go through and go, I am going to reach for the moon and the stars for my child. No problem. I'm going to reach for them. But at the same time, prepare and think about the possibility that he doesn't do those things and be okay with that. Now, 
I'm going to state <laughs> that there have been a lot of times where I felt like, okay, if by doing this, by thinking about those things, am I mentally or under the surface of, you know, I'm saying I'm reaching for the stars, but because I'm thinking about this, I have absolutely succumbed to the world's view of this is all he's going to be capable of. And I, again, reject that as well. <laughs> um, I think that especially in today's world, Unfortunately, a lot of these things require legal documentation and you have to save up money to do those legal documentation because it's expensive wow. stuff. Um, it's also important because you want to think long term, okay, if we have these things set up. So I'll give you an example. So we this summer got him his Alberta ID, his ID card. So it's instead of a license, it's an Alberta card because he's not driving. He's not learn getting his learner's license. And so we were told by another family with special needs that that was one of their biggest mistakes was that they didn't get them an ID because once they turned 18, the government assumed then that they were full-fledged adults. And so then when it was time to get an ID in order to do all of the paperwork for um, guardianship and all of that, um, that child had to sign his name and fill out the documentation because she, the mom wasn't allowed. She wasn't allowed. And the issue with that was, is that child wasn't capable. And so, uh, we this summer got him an Alberta ID and praise God, I was so nervous about it <laughs> because oftentimes they have like this little sign in this little box and don't touch the sides and all of that. And I was like, okay, this is not going to go well because he still writes very much like he's in grade one. Um, the way he, he, he doesn't like touching a pencil. So there's been not as much practice as needed. Um, and he ended up writing his first name and I'm like, there's no more room. Is it okay if we just leave it like that? And she was like, Oh yeah. So like there was, there were things that we were like, thank you Lord for giving us, um, really understanding. Cause I had phoned them and said, my son is autistic and you know, all of those things. But hearing the story of this family who was struggling with that because they hadn't thought of those things when they were 15, 16, 17, 18, um, that when they tried to do guardianship, it cost them so much more. And it was so many hoops to more hoops to jump. And so thinking about it earlier is more just preparation for the in case in case God says no to this particular miracle because I have another purpose in mind for your son's life or your daughter's life. Um, for some families, they know automatically that that's, that's not going to happen. For autism, I feel like especially more high functioning, they call it something else now, but when I was involved in it, it was high functioning or low functioning. Um, when there was, there's this very, very broad, and I'm trying to show you very broad, they could need care all of their life or they could, you know, something clicks in their brain and then they're able to do it. So, um, I'm likening this, I'm going to give you a, a word picture. So when you first get that diagnosis and you're first dealing with all the things that you have to deal with, it's like being in the trenches. When they're young, there's so many possibilities and there's so many therapies and you're trying to figure out what's the best thing for your kid. And it's just, there's so much, right? And there's the medical system and the school system and there's like bullets flying above your head and you're just hunkered down dealing with what you need to. And as you get to a place where you're comfortable, you've dealt with all of the emotions 
quote unquote, you've dealt with all, <laughs> you're still dealing with emotions, but the, the intensity of those young years and trying to figure it out and whatever, you get to a point where you're like, we're an autism family and it's not going to look like everybody else. And we're going to still have moments of, you know, random thoughts and grief and, and whatever, because we see some child, our child's age running to the grocery store to pick something up for mom. And I know my son isn't going to do that whatever the case may be but you get to a point where you're like this is our life and I've accepted that and I'm okay with it and in fact I find joy in this life that's when you get to a point when they're 15 and 16 17 where you're sitting there going okay now we need to prepare think about the rest and I just I wanted to share that with my followers and video peoples, um, the internet world, my brain, um, because I really feel like there's um, this idea that if you do prepare for that, then you've given up all hope and you're not, um, you're not willing to do all the things that you were used to. You've settled, you've, um, yeah, you, you've settled and that's not the case. And it's okay for you to go, okay, you know what, we're, we're in an okay place right now. I need to think about the possibilities of, you know, have a plan. Because if that plan isn't needed, shucks darn it all, I didn't need it. <laughs> and you can be happy about not needing the plan. But if you need the plan, you are prepared and you are ready to go instead of feeling overwhelmed. I really do feel like all of the provinces and states and even maybe Canada or the United States or Britain, wherever you're watching from, there should be a list of all the things. If you have a special needs child and you need to take guardianship because they're not capable of looking after themselves to some extent, these are the list of things that you need to get through so that it's all better. There, that list doesn't exist. So it's a lot of unfortunately research on our behalf, but I know all of you, all of you are really good at research by now. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I hope this video was helpful. There's so many things that could be said about this particular thing, but I just wanted to say that if you're in the position that we are, where we're just starting to think about those things and preparing and saving and doing all of that, um, if you feel deep down in your soul, well, maybe I've just given up. You haven't. You're being a responsible adult, responsible parent, and you're thinking things through and having a plan. And I pray that you won't need that plan, but if you do, you will feel so much better knowing that you have the steps figured out and you're ready to go rather than all of a sudden going, oh no, and having to go through so many more hoops. And yeah, like I, yeah, that's my prayer for you that you are also feeling like, okay, this is something that needs to be done. Um, and it doesn't diminish my job as a parent or my, you know, desires and hopes for my kids. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you are also on this journey and you're just coming by this channel, feel free to subscribe because like I said, the next few years are going to be all about preparing for the possible future where Darian stays with us. And you know what, being okay with that and figuring out what needs to be done. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.